Greetings, nerds. This is Cena Nerd. I'm your host, Sarah Belmont, and with me, as always, is our Mr. Producer, Will Paul. How are you doing tonight, Will? Doing very well, Sarah. How are you doing this Thursday evening? I'm good. <laughs> yeah, I'm good, too. It's just, you know, the last two weeks of House of the Dragon, Andor, and even She-Hulk, well, uh, I know we're going to get into a lot deeper, but uh, it, it's been some good TV. It's, you know, and and I know other shows are going on, like, yeah. we, we've we talked about that last week with Rings of Power and why we're not currently in Middle Earth at all, um, and then even Stargirl, which I'm, yeah. I'm maintaining, but I am losing focus, um, mm. but I normally do with Stargirl, it's always the second half of the season. Yeah. Um, yeah. And no, we haven't watched Werewolf by Night yet, but that is something... I think we plan on covering at the end of this month, a little closer to Halloween. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't watched Werewolf by Night. I've been, actually I have overall been very lucky. I haven't gotten spoiled uh, beyond just a general, you know, summary of of characters, but nothing more than I hadn't already didn't, didn't know. And uh, yeah, Stargirl, my plan is to get through, this amazing content that we have right now with the three shows we're going to be talking about tonight. And then, uh, since She-Hulk is cycling off, then I'll, I think I'm a bench to get caught up on Stargirl. Yeah. yeah. I mean, speaking about She-Hulk, this is the last, um, She-Hulk's the last thing we're going to see before we see Black Panther, which is yep. next on the slate. Um, and talking about the slate, well, it was announced this week that Marvel Studios has pushed back the release dates of Blade, Deadpool 3, Fantastic Four, and the Avengers Secret Wars, along with an untitled Marvel film, and they removed one from the calendar that was set for 2026. And all I have to say is, I don't care right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. this this again, this isn't a new thing for Feige to make all these announcements, but then things happen mm-hmm. and he adjusts. Yeah, so yeah. it's it's nothing new, it's nothing to be worried about. It's we're not talking we're talking Disney and Marvel. We're not talking DC and freaking Warner Brothers with all of their stupidity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um yeah, and, and you know, I know they were hopeful that when the Blade director parted ways with the studio, and they were hopeful that they could fill that role pretty quickly. But um, you know, I had it's sometimes better to take your time and, and mm-hmm. get it right instead of just rushing through. Because in addition to losing a director, there's been rumblings about issues with the script and other things for it and even if marsh you know but i guess the big concern now and i you know i've heard chatter on it about whether or not marshalla will be available uh so there's some questions about his schedule and stuff with the pushback but um yeah so it looks like it's getting moved from november 2023 to now september 2024 which of course you know it does have all the cascading effects given that you do have a shared universe like you said they adjust, and so things are getting, you know, pushed back three to six months, depending on whatever, uh, you know, you know, you probably, think, pull, yeah. Yeah, I think it's also a good sign, because it just means that Blade isn't some weird one-off. Right. Blade is going to be a pivotal character for the next phase or phases, and so that's why it's having such a ripple effect. If it didn't... I would actually be a little bit more worried and like, well, what does that mean? Hmm. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so, yeah. It, yeah. And maybe the untitled Marvel film, maybe that's because I know there was, I, I know we've had it on the run sheet for a couple of weeks, but we kept bumping it off because other things took priority. But uh, I guess Armor Wars is being converted from a Disney Plus show to to a theatrical release. So maybe that'll be that, that'll fill that slot or maybe the one that was re- move from um the calendar on 2026 maybe that'll get the one to get that will take that spot so we'll see what happens there i did not follow that but yeah okay yeah yeah no no armor (laughs) wars i'm like the untitled marvel film will do this and then the the one removed will do this and i'm like are they both untitled 
Yes. Well, well yes. <laughs> but yeah, but you know what I'm saying. It, I, it's fine. It's fine. I'm just poking fun. I know. I know. Um, uh, the other thing before we get into three shows with a lot to talk about um, is that one of our beloved shows is returning now on December 8th. Um, and that would be Doom Patrol. And now I'm mad because I read this backwards. So I read it backwards while Will was trying to explain the shift, the mo date movement. So, so I did not, I was excited because I was like, ooh, yay, Doom Patrol next month. No. No, we're getting Titans next month. We're getting yeah. I <laughs> well, I put Doom Patrol first because we love that show. I mean, even though it comes out later, and actually they're going to be dropping the first two episodes on December 8th, and then it will go until January 5th, Well, they'll, and then they'll take a break, and then uh, the balance of the season, uh, six remaining episodes will air in some point in 2023 so they're doing a part one take a break and then part two will come later they're going the stranger things route i just yep. hope that they pull off what stranger things did because that was still a great season of television um and we needed that break mm -hmm. um and it was it was good but so so it, titans they're they're coming back November. So I've actually watched a few of these teasers for Titans. Yeah. Um, they're so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just ah, Titans. I mean, we'll watch it and I will react, of course, because I mean, if I can make it through this movie that's coming up at the end of this month, a little movie that we've been talking about for years. Mm -hmm. Um Black Adam, if you have to name a name, then I think I can manage another season of Titans and just mocking it in all of its <laughs> lack of glory. Well, yeah, well, the thing about Titans is it always starts out, lately it starts out very strong, and then it just kind of flames out in the middle, and then, and then it ends strong. So hopefully they can just put together a full, coherent season. Man, I, I just, I feel like you have to watch, do you even remember last season's finale? Um, vaguely, yeah. Vaguely. <laughs> Listeners, he, heard, he said vaguely, and we all know that Will remembers a lot. Yeah. So, so, yeah, yeah. It did not flame out, like, considering where last season started, it is, I, I, that season just makes me angry, because it mm -hmm. was so good. And then it just went down, downhill to the point of it's like, are you sure you're not on CW? Why are you on HBO? Like, why? <laughs> why is this a thing? Um, but there are good things on HBO. And we will talk about the show that everyone is freaking talking about because everyone is watching it despite it airing on Sunday nights <laughs> yep. in America. <laughs> like, during football season. Yeah. Um, House of the Dragon, The Lord of the Tides. Will, how about you start us off in, in this episode and wherever you want to start? I will just start with this global big reaction to it, which is this episode effing rocked. I mean, mm -hmm. it just, from start to finish, I it was just glued to the television chef's kiss you know as far as just my my overall reaction um you know we we did get a we did get another time jump mm -hmm. uh, and uh you know at, at this juncture i know some people complain about the time jumps and stuff i just roll with it because if you if you're you know we know what we're getting here so if you're still complaining about the time jumps eight episodes and you're just complaining for the sake of complaining <laughs> i mean they, they've been very transparent about it let it go. Seriously, uh, but Will, on that point, about this whole, I, I hated that headline. I think it was LA Times who's like, episode eight, fix game House of Dragon pacing. Pro, um, pacing yeah, I saw program. that headline, yeah. I'm like, what? I have watched a lot of television. I have talked about a lot of television. I know what pacing problems are. This mm. show does not have a pacing issue. It was... Going into it as a view, 
viewer, you're not expecting them to do so many time jumps. But if you think about it, the show is still working despite the time jumps because to have the level of tension you had in this episode without war, without fighting, yeah, a guy got his head cut off or yeah. half of it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not, I'm not like, yeah, we know what happened. But still, there was such a palpable level of tension because of the family dynamics. Mm -hmm. That you may not have seen Renera's entire life play out, if, nor would you want to, because so many people complain about shows being slow. It's like yeah, they are showing you, yes, the highlights of their lives, but the most critical moments that allow an episode like this to play out mm -hmm. in such a way that it's just, it's moving, there's a lot of tension, there's, yeah. an, like, it's just beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, and to pick up on your point about the, the the politics and the and the and the the dramatics, and you know, we 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 get when we get into the story this week, you know, we start off with Renice, and we and we you know we learned that the peace that they had brokered some time ago, uh, you know, conflict is breaking out again, and. Um, and we learned that Lord Cor Corliss, it, it has been mortally wounded. Mm -hmm. And so all the things have been building up. It was just like, well, as soon as I heard about that with Corliss, I was like, oh boy, you know, they, this whole issue about Driftmark and, and, the, and, and also thinking back to how they lost their son, they've lost their daughter and, and now we're getting and thinking about Corliss's conversation with um, with one of Renee's kids at the funeral about you know all of your marks don't be yours and, and it, it it's come to a head and right. this, and 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 so you know so right off the bat this episode is already setting up like the, the legacy and lineage and all the things that and all the politics and the and the and the maneuverings is is coming to a head front and center and it just the episode started that way and then we go to back to king's landing and we and we learn it Wait, can, yeah, yeah can i touch on yeah. that opening yeah. um because because i agree with you like i don't think i don't think it set it up necessarily i think the previous episode set it up and yeah. then this episode right from the get-go it's like no this is happening Corliss mm -hmm. you remove him these kids are more vulnerable than ever and I emphasis on kids because Renera can handle herself she has Damon yeah. um but like me as a viewer I'm more like don't you hurt those kids <laughs> 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 I, I'm just I'm still like violence against children it just makes me feel a certain way and um and that's the vulnerability. And so we'll get into Alice's and Ren Allison and Renera, but that's why they are behaving. Their yeah. primary motivation as mothers is, is to protect their children yeah. um, as they play the most dangerous game there is. Yeah. And um, the thing that I wanted to mention about that opening shot is it's such a freaking fake out because they don't show you, they just show you the back of a throne so my mind, I'm like, oh, we're at the Iron Throne. And then yeah. they keep talking and I'm like, wait, wait, oh, oh, oh shit. <laughs> <laughs> because initially you're like, oh, this is how they're gonna kill off um, Viserys? Interesting. <laughs> no, yeah. it's Corliss who goes and you're like, oh, okay. And, and I mean, I just can't harp on this enough. Again, with the pacing, do we really need to know what was going like do we need to have Corliss around for six years like six more episodes for like this time in between in between last week's episode and this episode because he was that piece where if you remove you you really are putting this issue that has been this looming threat over yeah. Renera and her family um to a head and that's yeah. That's why the time jumps, I, I think it's just silly when people are like, I don't like them. I want more time with these characters. Well, you do, but you also don't want things to drag out unnecessarily. No, 
Exactly. Exactly. And you're you're right. I mean the the way they did the fake out, and then we get to this place, and then it does bring the issue to a head. And and Veyman, Valerian, at that moment was like, okay, it's time. I have you know I have the bloodline and and the I'm the right I should be the rightful heir to to Driftmark, and you know and, and put Renice. In a, in a spot where, you know, she, you know, we, we, she has to like honor her husband's wishes, but then also, you know, but also has to again reconcile the fact that at that point she still thinks that Renera and Damon were the orchestrators of her son's murder. So, well, it, on top of that, in the previous yeah. episode, she tells Corliss to put one of Lena's daughters in charge. Mm-hmm. Like that's the true succession to his throne. Yeah. yeah. Like, and that's, that's that layer. I thought about more so than the whole killing of, and maybe it's because I know as a viewer, he's still alive. Mm-hmm. So, but I thought that was more interesting and complex and her role. Um, they have used Princess Rhaenerys in such a masterful way because I also kept thinking about her conversation with Rhaenyra mm-hmm. when um, I think it was episode three or four when right after yeah. she yeah. changed hair, and they have this 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 exchange and like these are two masterful political people who and and they like no one won that argument. And no one won in this one where, <laughs> I mean, Rhaenerys went into this whole situation where she just has to wait and figure out who's going to come out on top and then take that side. Mm-hmm. Like, she's very calculated in everything she does in this episode because, um, just because she knew, like, at the end of the day, it's going to work out in my favor. Um, yeah. because she's now her daughters or her great granddaughters are betrothed to um Renera's kids. I don't know if that's a good or bad thing, frankly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> considering life expectancy, but but yeah, yeah. and and Veyman, like, I love his speech that he does up until the horror part. Um, but he I love, I think it's very important everything he says about this isn't the, um, we're not talking about the Targaryen house's survival. We're talking about um, the, what is their last name? The Valerian. House the Valerian. Valerian. Yeah. Which, I mean, listeners, correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't, I remember hearing a lot about Valerian steel. In Game of Thrones, but I don't really remember hearing a lot about that house. So I yeah. do feel as though this is like, like this is the path of an extinction extinction for them. Yeah. Um, which is very sad, but I think is is also very important in when we talk about um, Viserys. And my thing with Viserys is that I'm tired of people reviewers specifically. Who are less like, he's just a lame duck king. He's like, but finally in this episode, he was a great king and he did the right thing. That's because mm-hmm. in this episode, he didn't, he, he quote unquote played the role of king. But at the end of the day, he was a freaking father and probably the best head of a house that we've ever seen in this show. And I'm, I am including Game of Thrones. I mean, the closest you can get is Ned Stark. Mm-hmm. Um, but he is just he he has so much love for his family that yeah. the politics he doesn't he doesn't understand he doesn't care about but if it's a threat to his family he will he will lay down the law and cut out people's tongues if he wasn't so old um, and sick <laughs> yeah and po- or poison <laughs> yeah uh, for the milk and the poppy my yeah let's talk about is, my point is just that 
it wasn't necessarily a political decision he did in this episode. It was yeah. more about him as a father. And that's why he's been my favorite character yeah. since the beginning. And yeah, I and you, said Patty deserves an Emmy since the beginning. Thank you. You said it since the beginning. You have. You have. <laughs> and, and I, when watching this episode, just. Because I think you're right. I mean, I think all throughout this series, it has, it's for him, you know, he's not necessarily, he definitely has not been a great, he's been a, he, he's been a solid king as far as just keeping things, keeping the peace. Right. And because, and, and even he, I think a few episodes back, you know, he, 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 he pondered his, what his legacy was going to be mm -hmm. as far as like, you know, when they write about me in the history books, you know, I didn't have any wars. I didn't, you know, you know, he, you know, cause he had that mentality, you know, it was kind of like that mentality, like, you know, keeping the peace in and of itself is not going to get me recognized for being a great King. I got right. like, I've got to fight wars and battles and shed blood and expand the boundaries of, of the, you know, of the kingdom to, you know, to be recognized as, you know, the strong, strong king mm -hmm. so he will you know so he had you know so he had that piece of of viserys but you're right the the thing at the, at his core it, he, he you know he realized he recognizes that he was kind of this, this he was the accidental king <laughs> in a sense because whenever the decision whenever things went down earlier between choosing between him and his cousin, he he was selected mm -hmm. instead of instead of Renice. And but you know so but because if all things being equal, he, if he could abdicate and things would be cool, he 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 would probably be fine with not being the king. Oh, I don't think so. I don't think he would um, ever advocate. He's well, he too much of a Targaryen to do that. Yeah, true, true. But I'm just saying, just from a just from an academic, like standpoint but you're right i mean as far as that targaryen line lineage and backbone yeah he's not going to do it but that being said you know from the very you know they, they established from the very beginning of this of this show his love for his family mm -hmm. from, the time, from the time emma you know having to make that hard call about do i save the baby or do i save emma and you know, and you know, you saw the you know the anguish there, as far as hope you know doing this act will, you know, hopefully you know, the, the the care that he had for his family. He wasn't thinking that you know, yes, he was thinking about it from a standpoint of a king at that point, as far as carrying on a Targaryen line, but he was also thinking of as a husband and a father about trying to keep his family whole and then of course obviously emma and the baby died and he only had <laughs> all, all, all he had left was renera so right he, he he made sure that moving forward whatever happens he was going to make sure that at least you know he was going to be a father first and you know and he and he, and he struggled with those issues throughout the series and it, and it built up to this moment that when we had the amazing scene in the throne room. <laughs> right. Well, yeah. so, so just to go back to that first episode and that decision, um, he, I don't think he did it. He didn't, we have to remember the conversation him and Allison have, I think in episode three by the fire. Mm. And he talks about his guilt of that decision because it was his obsession that led to the love of his life's death. Mm -hmm. His obsession, not with being king, but thinking, but this prophecy, the true burden that the, um, the, the king or queen or who is ever in charge and their Targaryen is this prophecy. Mm -hmm. And thinking, oh, my kid, my son, my Aegon, like, Jesus Christ, stop naming your kid that, um, yeah, really. will, will be the hero. Guys, you're, you're, you're way too far in the past for that to be true. <laughs> Winter <laughs> isn't here yet. Um, but it's that obsession that led him to 
not only make that decision, but I think it, um, Emma had said that she had maybe five, like watched five of her kids die mm -hmm. um, due to complications at birth. Um, and then he was, his resolve after that sacrifice was, I'm, I'm going to honor her by making her daughter my heir. Mm -hmm. And, and in this episode, you see and an, a beautiful moment, um, that I was not expecting was, but it makes all the sense in the world because of the position. This is the most vulnerable Renera has ever been. Yeah. And the fact that she has that conversation with him and asks him like and says i don't even think i want it anymore i this is a such a burden and and then blames him like it's uh, the there's a beautiful irony to this character viserys because he is a fabulous father mm -hmm. and yet his actions and decisions have totally destroyed his family and the people he loves the most. Mm -hmm. And and looking back at it, that makes the very first like the very first episode telegraphs this. Like mm -hmm. this guy you're going to like, but he ultimately is going to be the demise of his family. Like he kills his wife in the first episode and now unfortunately, due to a fever dream, he has Allison and Renera now back at odds and likely to kill each other's children. So yeah, great. Yeah, great. <laughs> Good yeah. job, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. I mean, and, and that's, um, he, yeah, at the end of the day, he, he is a very tragic, tragic character in that regard. And, and, it, and whenever he was having to make these choices and, and, uh, and that very moving moment between him and Renera that evening, whenever you know, whenever she was asking about the legacy, the prophecy again, mm -hmm. and 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 questioning whether or not she has the fortitude to continue with this because she is, you know, it, it has worn her down. Mm -hmm. um, you know, well, she every, made all the stupid decisions, and they all caught up to her. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she's much, very much her father's daughter in some regards in that that way. Um, with not thinking, you know, with uh, as far as decision making, but um, but you know, whenever he had that moment, the 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 throne room moment. Yeah, yeah. And and because uh, uh, having to. I guess double down on strengthening her claim because he, you know, once he got out of the out of, out of the opium fog, because I mean, mm -hmm. that's, that's basically what it was. Right. He, you know, he was thinking clearly. He's like, I, I've got to do this, and 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 again reinforces to everyone um, that. She's she is the legitimate heir, and those children are the legitimate heirs to the throne, and and to the and, and you go back to Vaman. You're right. His speech was very powerful as far as there in the throne room when it, when he was questioning the he questioned the king like and everyone. You guys are. Doubling down this like this this lie and and your your lie is going to destroy my line, mm -hmm. and you know so it was just so many you know again but uh, because of the decision that was made years right. prior, all that came to a head in that throne room, right? And it yeah. was just it, it it was just a glorious moment, and and then and and. As far and, and just a wonderful storytelling. I mean, it's just everything yeah. about that was just the 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 walk, uh, the, the 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 pain. I mean, it was like all you know, hit all the the how Viserys has withered away. It just seemed like he was he was truly the physical. You know, he became the physical manifestation of 
all the all all the stuff that has ha- happened. <laughs> yeah, the weight of the crowd. Yeah. Yeah, the it, it it it's it's a very glorious cinematic moment, and that will win the director an Emmy for sure. Yeah, yeah, or just, sure, just yeah. that shot alone. Um, what I what I when I think about this episode and that scene in particular, um, is that to. The storytelling really shows or this is such a well-written show Mm -hmm. because when you're watching it, you're not thinking about the um, what will happen or what should happen. And I will admit there was not a single moment where I'm like, oh, Viserys is going to show up and save the day. No. And I don't think that any viewer who likes this show had that thought. And that's why the moment that those doors open, we are just as shocked as Mm -hmm. Renara and Allison. Yep. I was. We are, we are just like, holy shit. Yep. (laughs) I I was not expecting this. Part of me wanted to see Renara, like, like get a little bit about what's coming to her. But I'm also very delighted to see this old man make his way to the throne. And like his last big act is to solidify his grandfather or grandson's um, lineage. But it just, I, I, I thought it was so great because there are so many conversations that lead up and, and the, the pieces are all aligned for mm-hmm. Exactly what Renera says to to Renera is just like, girl, I'm gonna I'm gonna sit back and just watch you fall. So good luck with that. <laughs> I'll be <Yeah>. on my way. <laughs> and and we believe it. Um, and so hats off to everyone, all of the actors who allowed us to believe that so that we could have that moment of shock, just as yeah. them as characters did. Yeah, you're right. Because when Renice and Renera had that conversation in the courtyard, yeah, I was just like, well, well. Right. Yeah. And then you yeah. even have Renera, that's after that scene, she goes to her father. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, this is not, oh God, this yeah. is. So... And I'm like, I keep thinking to myself, this isn't the penultimate episode. Like, yeah. what? what is happening right now? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, and, and, and you would think you're just like, okay. I get it. I get why everyone's talking about Patty, but no, there is even a better scene. <laughs> <laughs> I, he, he was playing handicapped. I mean, literally the character had one eye mm-hmm. and yet through that one eye you saw during the dinner scene, mm. everything this man went for or, or lot the, his whole pathos like played out in those moments and his speech and that he just, he like, he doesn't want them. Like of all people, they should never view him as King. They should view him as a man who loves them. Yeah. And oh my God, it was just, it, it was, it's, just, it's so masterful. And like I said, yeah. he was, he had one eye. Mm-hmm. I mean, Damon had both of his eyes in that whole silent movie episode he did, y'all. But but Patty just took it to a whole fucking other level in this episode. He totally did. Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the, the dinner party scene, yeah, is equally as as, as compelling because you're, you're right. I mean, he, the, the emotion and you're, you're right. At the end of the day, yes, I am king. But in that moment, I am your father. I am your grandfather. We are at peace. <laughs> I'm laughing because of all of the memes about the Targaryen leadership. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Especially the I'm one. your cousin, I'm your <laughs> father, your brother, your sibling, your, 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 your uncle, uncle, your nephew, your great nephew. <laughs> so complicated. And oh yeah, I'm the other one who's named Aegon. <laughs> Yeah, I'm Aegon, Aegon A, Aegon B. I mean, we're going to have to do that, especially as we move forward. Uh, Aegon <laughs> when I, when, when I, Yeah, yeah, the, the rapist Aegon and the, um, and then the, 
yeah but uh yeah that but that scene um yeah patty um just killed i mean he did and to see the 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 emotion and you know the, he you know he, he knew that his end was closer truly closer i mean uh, that than than ever before and he was just like you know grant this dying man his his last wish of right. just let's just all be at peace you know it's funny now that we're talking about it um just how smart it was to start this episode with Corliss death um because it was that first strike against the truth actually coming out or mm -hmm people actually making moves um, and using this lie against Renera um, and her succession. And, and in this episode, to end with Viserys, um, I think death, however, we've been, we've been counting his death for a while. I'm uh, pretty can, sure. I'm yeah, pretty said, that, the director confirmed it. She said, yeah. Okay. He, yeah. okay. Um, but, and about how in this dinner scene, like they do get along. There's a lot of speeches. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of speeches, um, and there is joy and and there is forgiveness between Renera and Allison in the best way. Mm -hmm. um, but the moment he leaves, oh yeah, the shit's back on. <laughs> it, it just it, all it takes is for a pig to come out on the table. Yep. And um, this is this is again where like, okay. It's been six years. Can somebody explain to me how Eamon looks like he he grew up ten years and Aegon looks like he grew up maybe five years? Like yeah. Aegon is older than Eamon, okay? Yeah. Also, what what did we and this is where maybe I would appreciate less time jumps, but we saw them make fun of Aegon for not having or Eamon for not having a dragon one time with a pig. And that guy is still holding that against these little kids. He has the biggest dragon in the world. Like, what the fuck? Get over your childhood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. But he also lost. Yeah, and, yeah. And he's like, yeah, he lost an eye, but he gained a dragon. So why is he still holding on to this? But I think I think there's something else. I just as he's very cool. He's so much like his uncle, his great yeah. uncle. I don't know how that works anymore, but. Yeah. Um, and I love his delivery, the actor who plays him when he says, hello, nephews, like that's mm -hmm. such a great, a great line. Um, but I just, my one thing that I wish was done maybe a little differently would be for that, 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 um, that to be less like, oh, you made fun of me when I was a kid. So now I'm going to like taunt you over the. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah, yeah. You know what? What you know? As I was here thinking about the physical differences and stuff, and I think in a way, having Amon being the more um, physically, you know, one bigger, taller, more adept at fighting, because you know he is like you know he is he is, he is like Amon, huh? You mean Amon? Yeah, Eamon, yeah. Why, yeah, him taller and stuff is because I think Aegon, this, I think it's just, it's again, how they, how to use a physicality here. Because, you know, a a Aegon, Alice's Aegon, I should be, be clear, is, um, you know, when we've seen him, he's, you know, he's been goofing off, jerking off to, you know, out, out the window, you know, getting drunk at the funeral and, you know, now, you know, also like now raping, you know, the maidens at the, the assistants and stuff at the castle, uh, you know, and then the character is a very like, you know, kind of weakish looking, impish looking dude who's just like, huh, like, look, he, you know, it's like, this is what happens when we have inbreeding, you know, kind of deal. With the way he's, and then Amund is has ended up being a very physically strong, you know, definitely took the lessons that he got from um, Sir Cor Sir Sir um, Kristen. He's a good fighter. I mean, you know, I was 
when that whole scene went down in the, in the at the dinner party and and when, and when Damon stepped up to Eamon and I was like, man, they're about to throw down. And because I, I that, you know that's the fight, that's the showdown that you know because he, he you can see he he wants he he's ready to, he, he's he's ready he's ready to throw down and throw a fist. And so I think that's part of why they have the two brother, you know, the way they have aged up the brothers to show that that difference, you know, not only from a behavioral standpoint, but also from a physical standpoint to just show you like this other brother, even though this one brother has supposed to be the, the first heir, the second brother here, sort of like William and Harry in the real in the real world. Well, Harry got all the good looks, but William, you know, but, but William's the heir. <laughs> it's um it's what I mentioned last week about how these two brothers parallel the older brothers, mm. Viserys and Damon. Yeah. Like they're they're parallel. So yes, if the older brother, the one who's gonna be the hair the um potential king yeah. With the succession, the first son, sorry, that's the better way to put it. The first son mm -hmm. is going to be weaker because he's more like his father, while the second son is like all of the second sons we've got to know over the past eight episodes. Yeah. Um, who probably should be the rightful heir, but too bad they were born late. Yep. And I just I think I think part of the reason why he doesn't care about tournaments is because he's got his eye on a different thing. And, and um, but whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah. So what else? So Allison and Renera. Yeah. Um, the. I think we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Their, yeah, their forgiveness. forgiveness. But yeah, but also about how the, how, you know, they had their peace, they made their forgiveness, and then. Just seeing how the generational stuff, you know, all their tensions and fighting and stuff has is now been cast onto the, the next generation, and they're just going to continue to fight. So, what do you mean? Well, I mean, you know, the 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 the, the uncles and the nephews and the 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 the, the fighting over the crown. Over well, the crown. yeah, because because Allison now has it in her mind that. That her Vis Viserys yeah. wanted Aegon to be king. Yeah, because of, yeah. And so she wants to uphold that. Right. Because yeah, if if that didn't happen, I don't think that she would have any problem with Renera being queen. No, it would not. No, it definitely would. Otto would have a problem because Otto is the villain of this show. Yeah, Otto definitely would. Um, but yeah, but and but. With the Saris's speech, yeah, they they really did put a put a truce to their their conflict, but but, but it wasn't Viserys's speech. It was Rhaenyra's speech to Alicent, which was yeah. the first time that she ever acknowledged everything that Alicent has done for her father True. and her family. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, well, she said, thank you. And I think at the end of the day, that's all Allison wanted. It was just acknowledgement mm -hmm. of her, of her servitude and what she's been put through as having to remain the loyal wife, while her husband and her son are just like out there and whatever. But I don't think Viserys ever cheated. But that's not what I'm saying. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think. Speaking of, speaking of cheating. So the Damon's old mistress like showed made an appearance. Oh, is that who she was? I believe so. Okay, because I was thinking it might have been someone from Dorne. Hmm. Which is a family we haven't met yet. Um, okay. I'm familiar with their family. Yeah. But I yeah. I thought it was the old mistress because. From because it was because the because uh, the lady from one of the um, assistants from the from the drift mark, from the castle went to her went to her place and was like giving her all the tea as far as what what, what was going on there. So I yeah. thought, it was, so but I, I I'm just like I didn't I didn't take away that she like that scene that woman felt very calculated. Like yeah, she's, it, she's after 
a marriage or something. She's after having her seat at that table. Um, well, and so reason, that makes me think it's one of the royal family, or not the royal families, but one of the high families. High families, yeah. Only reason why I thought maybe it was um, one of Damon's, I thought it was Damon's old mistress was that they, maybe she had sired, he had, they had sired a child. And right. it will just be another threat to Renera's legitimacy. Nah. I mean, he, he has other children. They're roaming yeah. around. Yeah, and true. everybody yeah. knew he, anyways, yeah. maybe. Um, this is any way they can, they can make, you know, things even more convoluted <laughs> as far as. Uh, well, I mean. And threats, and threats to, to Renera, and, and, you know, Renera's claim. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But all right, on that note, uh, where do you want to go? Do you want to go Star Wars or She Hulk? Uh, let's go to Star Wars. Okay, let's go to Star Wars because I this episode. Wow, I you you start this time. Um, okay. So Andor, um, as much as I like this episode and I fully watched it, I was engaged the whole entire time. It is definitely my forgotten show this week because mm. we just got done with almost an hour discussion about House of Dragon and She-Hulk um, recency bias. I just watched it today. <laughs> <laughs> um, and honestly, not a lot happened in this episode of Andor. But so much happened in this episode. It it is a um, this episode included all of the reasons why I really like Rogue One. <laughs> <laughs> um, because it wasn't about the rebels talking about doing something; they actually did something. Um, and the stakes felt far more real in this episode, even though I knew. Like, not all of these, not all of Andor's crew was going to make this out of it alive. I still felt the urgency, the um, the stakes, more so than I did when Obi-Wan went on to some ship to get back Leia. Mm -hmm. Because he has the Force, and these people don't. Um, these people are true fighters, and it truly felt like a heist-slash-war movie again. Um... And and the tension was just there um, as you as you watched everyone from the get go realize what they were doing um, from that scene with Andor and um, not uh, Nimic um, mm -hmm. in the beginning um, talking about um, about why they were doing this and just and. And need I don't know what they're talking about. They're talking about something really smart. Yeah, Nimic Nimic right was now. Nimic was he had trouble sleeping. And yeah, then, he had trouble sleeping. Yeah, and yeah, because you know, Andrew was like, you know, it was a whole thing about the true believer and you know, and whereas, you know, and whether or not Nimic was like, well, you know, maybe we could just be like, you know, we could just hire people like, you know, be mercenaries and 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 Andor was like, no, well, or I guess Clem is his alias, but he was like, no, you know, the Empire doesn't care about you, or they don't, you know, it, it's, it was a lot of things where he was just like, no, 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 um, you're, you're on the right path, kid, just, just, but, uh, but yeah, I, that, you know, the, the, we, 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 we knew he was going, that kid was, you know, the manifesto writers are always going to be the ones who are going to get it first, even though he didn't get it first. Get it first. But as I said, they, they did. That's well, one of the things I did like about this episode, because they, you know, there we knew going in that people were not going to come out of this thing. Mm -hmm. and, and and it was like, but they turned it on his head in the sense that um, it, it, it didn't go down like the how you thought it was going to go and i appreciated that as far as 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 the episode progressed and especially as the as the, the, the fight the firefight when the heist was discovered by the the lax radio operator um how that all went down and um i was like hey the kid made it but then he gets taken out by like the currency which is like a whole nother like uh it, it, i guess 
allusion to the to the crushing weight of the empire. You know, it may not it may not necessarily be a blaster that takes you out, but it's just like the the the, the currency of the of the of the, of the empire. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. 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 Uh, no, it's um, Tarman who dies first, which we find out in this episode that he was a former um, stormtrooper, mm-hmm. um, which is cool. And I, yeah, um, I feel like I wasn't. It was just a, it was a good episode. If I I I think pretty much if you liked Rogue One and you've been watching this show, this episode parallels most of what went on in Rogue One. I feel like it was, yeah. I, I actually, I think it's better than Rogue One in some regards. Oh um, yeah. Uh, it, I mean, uh, it, because I, th- I think, you know, you know, and it's the, I guess it's the difference between obviously the, between a TV show and a movie and a TV show where you can really, ex- you know, where we've had, and I like with these the way they structured the series, it's like each, you know, with the three episode arcs. We really get engaged and and um, with these characters and 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 come to you know have an have an affection for these characters um, and, and and what I liked about this this particular arc even better than the, the first three episode arc uh, was the how they really they, this was the one where they really got into the depths of like. Why the empire is is so bad, <laughs> mm-hmm. as far as how they were treating the natives on the planet? Because I mean, you know, we got some of that in the first three episodes. You know, just showing how like the planet that Andor was marooned on, uh, with the big, the, you know, the strip mining and all that kind of stuff, and the and the corporate security elements. But here, you know, you, you saw the xenophobia, you saw the racism and the colonialism. Really, I mean, you know, that, the empire has always been an allegory for like, you know, great, you know, evil empires or empires of the past, and, and how colonialism is, right? I mean, that's what that's what made the tradition, the you know, original Star Wars so good. It's because you know, because you had those elements, and you know, and with turning the Jedi and stuff, it kind of got that kind of element got kind of taken away a bit. Uh, here it's it's front and center. I mean, how they're like talking about the natives, how the commandant and the colonel were standing there, you know, fat and happy. I can't help every time I see that scene, I always think about the Andor trailer. Uh, with whenever uh, he was making a narrative about the empire, mm-hmm. and, and, and Gorn standing back there behind those two two guys, and you know, Gorn, uh, you know, how his where he had his epiphany. Whether it was, you know, we learned again, learning about these characters, why did it come to the rebellion to begin with? For him, it was because another imperial officer stole his potential mate, and and and, and so while they're doing these discussions about the people and how the Donny have like, you know, gone from five hundred down to fifty, and how they're going to exploit them to build the Death Star later, and you know, it was. The, the disdain there and so you know we see how bad the empire is but then they also make these characters three-dimensional because then the commandant is like going home to his his family <laughs> because and, and you know talk you know trying to encourage his son to wear the you know the, the suit and and you know, he's trying to put his belt on and stuff and his wife's like you know yeah well maybe gain some weight <laughs> you know and it's like the, you know the, those those true to life moments like you know remind you that even even the even the evil doers, you know, are still people, and they have families, and they they you know, it, you know, it, it, it's it's easier to than them just being just this abstract mustache trolley villain. So I think that's what I, what I've been enjoying about this series because then when things do go down, it's just like the stakes and the the you know the what. The development it just really gives a good payoff storytelling wise and so it's just like and I, I was like when i was watching this episode last night i was like on the edge of my seat for the full 40 minutes or however long it was because i just didn't know what was going to come next i mean i knew what was going to come but the way they folded this heist was completely different from how i expected it to go right 
Um, I was not expecting for Andor to kill Skeen. Mm. I thought that whole scene was a bit weird. Um, mm. I don't think they... S- it just came out of so such nowhere for Skeen to be... Um, tell like like i felt a bit betrayed um because of everything what you just said about the previous episodes we get we got to know these characters and have affection for them and even at the beginning of this episode skeen comes off as being a good guy he's the yeah. one who's like we got to go to the doctor um but i guess that makes a bit more sense now why he was really pushing for that especially if he wanted to take the money and run for himself Mm -hmm. Um, but he needed Andor and Andor realizing that this is his chance to escape and get out of this mess. But at the same time, like he doesn't want Skeen to get away because um, Skeen is in it for, for very selfish reasons. Um, So he kills him, Um, which I don't know. There was just something about it where I was like, wait, what's going on? (laughs) (laughs) What what is happening oh. right now? Like I love gray characters, but there was just something about it where I felt very um just kind of like really you went he you did this? Um oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. The, see the skeet the, the whole thing with skeet it was they kind of, you know they kind of set it up with with the uh, I'm not saying they didn't set it up. I it yeah. just didn't work as well it didn't work fully for me like it was maybe 60 okay. percent there okay gotcha gotcha the overall I, execution i was just like hmm, that's an interesting choice yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I it didn't yeah i, I hear you I, I i could see i, I see your point there i mean it, it worked for me it did mm-hmm. work for me but but I could see how just looking at it object trying to you know step it back a little bit I I could see where it was not as full maybe it could have baked a little bit better um, but uh, but yeah you know I I, uh, I I get why Andor wanted to like you know he was totally like in it for the money and and I think Luthen kind of I mean I think that's probably why he put him with this group because. At the end of the day, he knew Andor would get the job done um, as far as following through with the heist itself. But at the you know, but but he was also hopeful that it, maybe he, you know he could he could you know, this will sort of this will probably be the evolution of Andor as far as like baby steps you know he's not going to be all into the rebellion but calls of one mission and I, and I think that was sort of why they had him you know take his 30,000 credits and, and go because I think otherwise one mission doesn't make it make make a rebel <laughs> no no but but I I mean I'm glad you brought that up like that's still the biggest mystery there is is why Luthen wanted Andor, mm. and what, why, why is he important to him? Um, because I did what did work for me was that scene with Luthen and the realization that the plan worked. Mm-hmm. Oh, that was a great! Scene. I, that was a beautiful moment, yeah. um, and it fully worked for me. And and um, and and I mean, like I said, everything that happened on Doctor Planet. It worked except for the skein, skein change, like that that mm. flip. Mm-hmm. For whatever reason, like all of Andor's actions, they make sense. Um, Val's actions make sense in that moment, um, and in fact, uh, pretty much everything that plays out makes sense except for the flip. And I don't know why exactly. Um, guys, you just heard me ramble for 50 minutes about House of Dragon. I've been clearly thinking about a different show. So I haven't had as much time to process, um, yeah. um, why that didn't work for me, but, um, that's my honest opinion. Um, yeah. anything yeah. else before we get into she Hulk's finale? Uh, you know, a couple other quick things. The, um, you know, I think 
loose end, speaking of loose end and Mon Mothma and the rebellion itself, I mean, this was what I really also enjoyed about this episode was the fact that this was like the first part of the setting a stage for the rebellion itself because it was just like clearly their first big win and like Luthen's reaction like oh this shit oh my this actually worked so it was clear that this was you know they've been doing you know and and the Daedra has been talking about you know the various little one-offs here and there but this is really their first big big win that, that sets things up for for future and it ties back to some of the conversations that Luthen and Mamatha had earlier at this arc uh, just trying to get resources and money, and then her speech in the Senate. Of course, I think of Star Wars Rebels uh, because you know the the group that she was talking about as far as introducing the bill um, later plays a role in her getting um, take rescued by by the the the, the crew and, and and Star Wars Rebels, and 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 so. You know, so again, the, the whole world building and how things are just sort of like, just like about, we're soon to go to the MCU, how interconnected and how they're built, how they really are building out this world and building out this universe as far as this period of Star Wars that, um, you know, that makes, for me, it makes, it's filling in, it's filling in those gaps as far as what, you know, what happened before New Hope? And, and they're doing it in a way that like, really does justify having a show like Andor, which I think a lot of people were wondering, well, why are you doing this prequel about a character who was in a movie and we already knew his his fate? This is why. The episodes like this, where they really are building out the, building out the rebellion, I think really worked. And then and then last, it's just just how beautiful the episode was from, from a, the, the, with the eye itself. Um, you know, and 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 the escape and the Tie Fighters and 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 all, it, I just it just blew me away. I mean, I just I, I can't wait to watch this episode again uh, because it was just probably you know this episode and the way this series is going each week. I am getting you know, and it, it, it since we haven't finished the series yet, I can't redo my rankings. But if the things continue to trend the way they have been trending, I mean, Ant this series is going to like definitely may break into my top three as far as my live action Star Wars list. It already has for me. Yeah. Um, and I remain lukewarm on it. So that tells yeah. you something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, all right. So moving on to She-Hulk, the finale. Um, I like this finale. Um, I know why it's controversial. I know why there's a debate about it, which just the debate about it sums up the debate about the entire season. But yep. for me, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why, but but I like Kevin and I like um, the breaking, of, the fully breaking of the fourth wall in a way that I never saw coming. <laughs> <laughs> I do understand the flaws in this, mm -hmm. um, and there are flaws in it. And and I and I honestly, thinking about it, I shouldn't like this finale. I really shouldn't. I should be mad about it because you know what? They didn't really show her resolving anything. They just mm -hmm. like everything was resolved. <laughs> yeah, that was my. That's my my the first note that I wrote down actually. <laughs> when I yeah. was like was. He didn't. He, he, yes, it reminded me. Of my note was: it reminds me of Falcon and Winter Soldier with the whole issue about racism and stuff. Here it was sexism and misogyny and everything, and they just built all that stuff up in last episode, and they completely ignored this episode. It pisses me off, but I did like the episode. <laughs> I wouldn't say they completely ignored it for because because of everything that happened in the first ten yeah. minutes. Yeah, that's true. Uh, but it, yeah, but I mean. No, but, but it was the, it was, the actual resolution. They completely yeah. ignoring actually addressing that issue that they were getting, wanting had been talk, talking about, and it's it's not even that. It's just like you don't really see like okay, so she comes back, and then everyone's being arrested. Why yeah. is everyone being arrested? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, like what? <laughs> and all oh, all of a sudden she's free. Well, why is she free? Like it doesn't it it 
they they made they put um they took away everything that she had um she had her powers her job she she put her back to um square one which we saw play out i think in the second episode um but then they quickly they escalated it to the point where we all saw what was, what was coming with Intelligente and everything and, and mm -hmm. Todd Phelps. Um, we didn't, I, I wasn't really, I did think it was interesting that Emil has been, um, been uh, speaking at various engagements and um, as abomination, mm -hmm. which is another thing they didn't really explain. Like, okay, so he's going back because, but how was he not setting off the alarm on his inhibitor? Like exactly. the whole episode where it did. So maybe, maybe that's what really happened in that episode. But anyways, um, despite all of these flaws, I really like the whole Kevin thing. I, the, they fully committed to break her breaking the fourth wall to where you see her and then she, she's, in the guy for a moment i thought my power had gone up <laughs> so like, why am i on the disney menu yeah um it did work. And we see her and and she like the i just there's something so charming about tatiana in this role mm -hmm. as jennifer and um that and and i'm sure people have said it that can only rival how charming Ryan Reynolds is as Deadpool. Yeah. Like, I, it's so hard to pull that off mm -hmm. um, and make and still be likable that when after she got all of her wishes and then she they were alluding to like Easter eggs and like what they wanted to do and why and when are we gonna get the X-Men? Like all of a sudden you're like, okay, I am Jen, Jen is me, thank you. This is how I would act if I was in a room with quote unquote Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kevin, Kevin, yeah, I was, I was reading, Kevin was cool with the whole idea too, except the only thing he, only thing he said, Kevin Feige said, he, 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 didn't, he didn't think made any sense was, why would a robot wear a hat? So they just they've compromised and like I guess the, if you look at the the lens yeah. and stuff they do the kind of a visor to be for <laughs> other than that, uh, right. yeah. Uh, and but the, uh, and oh yeah, the best line of arguably maybe this season. I like to smash things. Yeah, <laughs> I smash the walls and I smash Matt Murdock. Murdock. <laughs> oh my god, it was such a great line. Yeah. And it just it took me back to how I felt seeing him do the walk of shame in the previous mm -hmm. episode. But now you know what they did, Will. You yeah. know what they did. If we don't get Devil Hulk or She Devil in the Devil season, mm -hmm. there will be riots. There will be riots in the street. The death kind of. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. Yeah, Kevin will have. Yeah, Kevin will have a, a lot of angry, angry fans his way if that doesn't happen but uh yeah I, you know i the the only thing as far as i don't know it was super meta i mean and, I, and you're right whenever the thing clicked back to to the to the marvel selection screen on disney plus i was mm -hmm. like yeah it got me too i was like wait a minute um but i don't know so i it's I mean, this was done in a comic. I mean, John Byrne had the moment where she rips out the, you know, rips, kicks through and, like, tells John Byrne, the comic book writer, um, dude, what do you tell, you know, what do you, t you know, tell us how to resolve the story? So all these things were, were, were based in the, in the comic. So it wasn't, um, so if, if people are grumbling about that, then they're, they're missed, you know, they're, they're missing the point. Um, it, it, uh, you know, it almost, but almost felt like it was like fourth wall, but also it was almost like, like a new episode of, uh, instead. So it was like part fourth wall, but also so, but but also like I'm step, you know, but I'm going to, you know, 
it, remember, like, I guess it was sort of like, uh, what was it, like, 90210 when they had a show about making the show? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know, when we did that, we did a. I think we we potted about that when it, they had that reboot a few years ago, and I felt that 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 was kind of vibe that I was getting to. It was like, okay, I'm gonna have a show about making my show. So, right. Um. And but it, but I did other than you know the first place you know place where I did laugh out loud was you know whenever she was addressing the writers' room and actually you know the the, the head writer and showrunner she was she was actually in that scene. Um. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so I was like, okay, this is working. And then, but the Kevin, but when I went to Kevin itself, and then and, and it, 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 that's when it like, I really like, okay, I'm on board with this, especially when she kicked it out. And then she's like, hmm, let me pick assembled. <laughs> I was like, um, as far as, you know, cutting through there, um, it, um, it, it did work. The only thing, like I said, I mean, um, the only other, I mean, as far as like things that I did have, I guess, I don't even know if it's issues or what, maybe some issues with was just like the ending, um, just the way Hulk just kind of dropped in uh, with his son, um, you know, and they were just kind of teasing stuff clearly for, for future for future uh, future uh, projects. But but I don't know if I had a, it was kind of like, the, the ending just seemed kind of like, Kind of mishmash to me. So, I mean, it was great with the family and them, like, all um, really mad at the picnic. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, you know, I got I got a lot of, like, you know, the things that I really enjoyed about, like, for example, Miss Marvel, that that was there in that kind of scene, too, because it was like, okay, these are just normal things that normal people do. And um, so I really liked that aspect of the, of the end of the episode. Uh, but uh, and then the the only the other big plus for me was just the uh, just just thinking about just from from about the from being a kid was the uh, how they started out the episode using the classic uh, Incredible Hulk uh, lead in opening uh, to open up this episode. Right. Uh, yeah, that was just with with, with Bill Bixby and 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 um, using that was just just. Brilliant stroke. I mean, everything about the finale actually, for me, it actually worked. And again, what I talked about when we first started talking about the show weeks ago, when you know it unapologetically knows what it is, and and when it stays to that, that's what I really like the show. And I felt like episodes four to seven. Where was where I kind of got off that because it just seemed like to meander and, and and get away from those strong elements that that it started out with. But then these last two episodes got back to it, and you know I was like I felt satisfied with the with the finale. Yes, but he hated how it was felt. So he... what's that? <laughs> Nothing. You um. The one thing that I forgot to mention when we talked about Kevin um, was the brilliant exchange about, oh, were you expecting a man? Mm -hmm. Because, again, as much as they forget about addressing the points, they still manage to have these subtle, like, like uh, sexism, like jokes or or, um, subtext in the dialogue. Um, But it's not a man. It's a machine. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I'm glad you brought that up because I, you know, I, now that I think about it and and reflect on it more, it, where where I was saying it felt like they built up a lot of these things in the beginning, you know, with the last episode, but then kind of discarded discarded them a bit. They did it. You, you're right. They did do. They did address it. It's just it's it wasn't the preachy Sam Wilson way. Um, oh no, that, that happened I didn't do at the that. end of the that, that the Falcon and Soldier, but it was like, like, like you said, like with the Kevin. I mean, that. that I, think, you know, they, I think overall, again, this season sums up a lot of discussion of the entire, or this episode sums up a lot of the discussion that we've had about the entire season. Is that the show? It it, it de- there's the story there's the the aspect of the show that led to the finale with um titania busting in and the yeah. hulk busting in and then there's the show 
that led to her breaking the fourth wall and being like, um, I don't like what's happening right now. This is so, so many tropes. Like everyone's all is coming. They don't want this. They want something else. I think we've always been on board when the show is something else and um, all of the really smart jokes, the yeah. not slapstick jokes. Mm -hmm. um, but it never, and hopefully now that we've um, finished the first season, hopefully season two can be more along the lines of having those elements about what we really did like about this, this character and this world that they've built. Um, as she progressed, especially now that she's fully embraced herself as She-Hulk, um, yeah. having to live without being her for a day or two, um, for probably a few weeks. But the, uh, I mean, my my one complaint is just, I really like seeing Wong, um, but where <laughs> the heck was Madison? Okay, she yeah. should have poked her head out. Okay, yeah. that yeah. should have been a thing. Like. <sighs> If we don't get Wongers and Madison back, like again, Kevin, there will be riots. <laughs> yeah, yeah, especially given that they use they use Madison in the, in the promos for the week. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, I was so I was just sitting there. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I always like Wong and Abomination, but where's Madison? Where's Matt? Where's because, because I know Emil Blonsky is going to turn into Abomination so quickly when Madison starts talking. <laughs> 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 like man so no overall um i like the finale i there's there's something about it and i and i think it's mainly resides in the charm of tatiana mosley mm -hmm. um but i i overall like the show despite the very at obvious flaws and um i'm not in denial of them um, but, but, you know, sometimes we like bad television. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I really, I need to get going. I'm clearly delusional. So on that note, Will, <laughs> why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you? Yes, you can find me at Will M. Polk on Twitter, W-I-L-L-M-P-O-L-K. And um, special note for listeners, we will not be on next week. Um, we are going to do a special House of Dragon penultimate finale um, on Monday in two, two weeks. So we will be off next week, and then you'll get an early episode where we are able to finally talk House of Dragon for a full, full hour. hour. <laughs> <laughs> um, which we'll need, considering we've already spent so much time talking about it but on that note you can find me at sj belmont s-j-b-e-l-m-m-o-n-t please follow our crew on twitter at cena nerd friend us on facebook follow us on instagram and visit our website www.cenanerdpodcast.com but most importantly rate follow and comment on apple Podcasts, spotify youtube google Podcasts, or wherever the heck you get your podcasts good night geek out and you're welcome